Uh, welcome students in this e-learning class. This lecture is uh, meant for semester 2 students program course and today I am going to teach the novel Such a Long Journey written by Rohintan Mystery which is included in your uh, syllabus. This lecture I have, I have sort of divided this lecture into two parts. The first part uh, in, in the first part I shall be discussing in, in very brief the outline of the story because uh, since most of you do not have the access to the text and in the next part I am going to discuss the critical aspects regarding this novel. So uh, let's continue. This novel, uh, I mean such a long journey was published in the year 1991 but this novel is set in the backdrop of India-Pakistan War of 1971 and the subsequent uh, Bangladesh War of Liberation and uh, it, it, it sheds light on the contemporary scenario of soci social, political, the communal tensions and the economic fragility, the government corruption etc. Uh, this is of worth considering that uh, Mystery's novel, Such a Long Journey, was nominated for the Man Booker Prize in the year 1991. However, it lost to uh, Ben Oakley's famous novel, The Famished Robes. I think all of you have heard of this novel. So, this novel is set in Bombay or present Mumbai in around the year 1970-1971. The main protagonist of this novel is uh, Gustav Nobel, who is a member of Parsi community. Now, this is very, uh, this is very interesting regarding this uh, portion of Parsi community because Rohinton Mystery himself is a Parsi, and you see the Parsi community in India uh, is a very minority. Uh, I think their total population. This is around 0.6% uh, taking the entire India together. So the Parsi community has, has less members, far less members than other minority communities uh, if we compare to the Islam, the Muslims, the Jains, Buddhists or Christians. Right? So they are of minuscule importance or uh, and these Parsis mostly reside in uh, Bombay. Some of them do live in our state West Bengal. You, you even find your Parsi uh, friends or acquaintances. Uh, uh, a famous example of or the most prominent figure of Parsi community is you all know uh, Rotom Tata, the famous businessman of India, and who is the present head of uh, Tata Consultancy Services. Uh, Tata group. Now, Parsi community, as this community is, is the minority, is the very, very minority, so it offers a neutral perspective to the ongoing socio political and cultural conflicts in India. Uh, I would like to refer to Babsi Silva's novel, Ice Candy Man. And which is set in the backdrop of partition of India and, uh, between India and Pakistan in the year 1947. And in that novel, Ice Candy Man, the entire story is narrated through the eyes of a Parsi girl, a small Parsi girl named Lenny. Uh, so, Babsi Sidwa, another Parsi writer. <clears throat> so, you have, we do have uh, in Indian literature uh, notable prominent instances from Parsi authors and writers. Now, this man, Gustav Nobel, belongs from a Parsi family, but he is now working as a clerk in a bank, right? And he is suffering, <coughs> he is suffering not from poverty, but uh, actually from a financial crisis. And as we read the novel, we come to know that this is man, Gustav, his forefathers were, were very rich. They had an affluent business, but <coughs> somehow they fell into bankruptcy. And now they had to struggle against 
financial odds. Uh, such a tragic happening in life. Now, this man, Gustav, is very a uh, devoted family man. Uh, we have his wife named Dil Nawaz, and they have three children, two sons and a daughter. The, il the eldest son is named Sohara, the second is named uh, Darish, and the third, the little daughter, is named Roshan, right? So the novel projects Gustav as a very devout Parshi man who wakes up uh, before sunrise around 6 a.m. He, he prays to the Parshi god Ahur Mazda, right? And <coughs> he whips his Kusti to drive away uh, the negative force of Ahirman. And he is a very, very physically agile, right? He is a tall, broad shouldered man and he is a very masculine in his appearance with his thick black moustache and he walks with a limp after an accident a few years ago where he saved the life of his eldest son. So we have the reference of an accident where, where the father saved the life of his eldest son named Sohara but uh, unfortunately he, uh, he is physically in geo, right? <coughs> His hips were broken and we gradually come, as we progressed to the story, we gradually come to know that his friend, Major Billy Moria, uh, he, he helped Gustav a lot and uh, taking his help, he actually recovered from his illness. Now, uh, his son, Sohara, is a very intelligent, right? He has cleared the entrance examination of the prestigious Bombay IIT, you, you, you all know, Indian Institute of Technology. And a party is organized in, in Gustav's home regarding the celebration of his son's success, right? And in that party, we have a heated conversation between the father and the son as <coughs> the son Sohara expresses his wish to not to pursue a course in engineering or science or technology uh, but he dreams of being an artist pursue his interest in art right so in this family dinner uh, Sohara's exam re results uh, uh, projecting at the Sohara, Sohara's exam result uh, this family dinner explores into a violent argument and the consequent split between the father and the son because Sohara discloses, uh, discloses his wish uh, to, to study arts program with his friend and this, this man Gustav was unable to control his anger in front of his wife Dilnavas uh, who herself was stumped and wants him to be quiet and what was the result of this split between father and the son? Uh, Gustav says that he will only forgive his son Sohara if he apologizes. Right. <clears throat> but Dilnamas, his wife, no, he, he, she knows that this will never happen. Now, uh, <clears throat> we have the reference of Gustav's friend, Major Billy Moria. So, Major Billy Moria is an army man, veteran army man, who is involved in a game of deception and uh, perhaps there is a hint in the novel that he might be associated with a terrorist organization working for India's enemy Pakistan and <clears throat> he is one of Gustav's close friends and he was also like a second father to Gustav's children. Right. Uh, he utters about his difficulties and India's political situation uh, during the tenure of Indira Gandhi as the Prime Minister. When, and this novel is set in the time when Indira Gandhi was our Prime Minister. So, Major Jimmy was instructed through the phone by none other than the PM herself, Indira Gandhi, uh, to withdraw the sum of 60 lakh rupees from the SBI bank. I mean, State Bank of India on an emergency basis. Later, uh, police found out that this no, this money was illegal. I mean, black money. And as you know, uh, very 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 shrewdly, the PM Indira Gandhi 
what she did uh, she was she refused to accept that she was directly involved in the money scam right. <clears throat> so uh, consequently major jimmy was arrested by the police he was tortured in prison and his health began to decline uh, he was in prison for 4 years and he died due to heart attack uh, before the period of his imprisonment was over now this is the this is the description that you find uh, that you find in the novel about uh, major jimmy billy moria who was a friend of ustad but this this episode is very important significant because uh, major billy moria asked a help of to his friend ustad he gave him a fraud bank account a fake bank account and asked him to deposit 10 lakh rupees equivalent to 1 million rupees in that account <clears throat> gustad was very frightened and and uh, uh, she uh, and sorry he uh, he he told everything to his neighbor uh, dinshoji dinshoji uh, to help him in this crisis right at first his wife Dilnawaz refused to comply to uh, to Jimmy's word, but you see, they are faced with threats and blackmail. Right. So what they did, uh, as advised by Dean Shoji, that uh, they used to they used to submit a little amount of money in the in that fake bank account so that they will go unnoticed by the police department and they will not get arrested but as uh, jimmy's imprisonment and arrest was reported in the newspaper so uh, gustav retrieves the money five days ahead uh, of, of the man gulam who was assigned by jimmy Mil jimmy billy moria to communicate with gustav so he gave gustav a 30 days deadline to retrieve the money and <clears throat> uh, Gustav promises fulfills the deadline five days ahead right so uh, but Dinshoji's health, uh, health began to decline rapidly and he died in the hospital so Gustav returns the money to Gulam and Gulam gives Gustav a letter from Jimmy and this letter uh, this letter tells the readers that Jimmy wants to meet Gustav in when when he is bedridden in the hospital of Delhi. Gustav goes to Delhi, and he he uh, he comes to know about this political game of deception and secrecy. Now, after returning, Gustav's old friend named Malcolm he takes Gustav to a Catholic church where Gustav founds peace. But upon returning home, he learns that Dinshoji has died. Right? So Gustav goes to the hospital and sits with Dinshoji's uh, dead body right? uh, until his wife arrives. He attends both the family funeral and public ceremony. So this is the journey, the long journey which Gustav undertakes. Uh, we, we also come to know that Jimmy apologizes. To, to Gustav for involving him in trouble but he now feels that there is nothing to forgive <clears throat> and subsequently Gustav comes to know that India and I mean our Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had declared in the radio that India is going to have war with Pakistan and as you know from the pages of history that as Indian army advances Pakistan faces tremendous military defeat and as a result Bangladesh became liberated from the clutches of authoritarian Pakistani Khan Shena regime. Uh, Gustav comes upon a short piece announcing the death of Jim Billy Moria after his death and he is the only person to be present at the mourner in the funeral. The last part, I mean the climax of the story involves of a social protest by this Parshi community. The doctor whom Gustav went 
taking her daughter Rus uh, sorry <coughs> Roshan, uh, Doctor Paymaster, and another neighbor of Khudadad residency, Pierre Bhai Panwala. So these two people led a column of protesters mar marching against the city to protest poor living conditions. Right. So, workmen have come to Khodadad building, the residency of all these Parsi people, to widen the road in front of the complex. So, a scuffle, a fighting erupts between these workmen and city dwellers. And Tehemu, who is a physically disabled man, uh, he, is, he died uh, after he is hit by a brick in the head. So, this, this death, this death of Tehemu brings this father and the son again into a proximity, into a very close relation. Uh, so Gustav and Sohorab are reunited in, in, in their apartment and at last we see in the novel that Gustav pulls out, pulls down the, the blackout paper uh, that has covered the window since uh, India was involved in war with China. And this is where the novel ends. In my, next, in my next lecture, I shall be discussing about the critical aspects regarding this novel. Thank you.